All right, so today we're doing futuristic vehicle sound design. So mostly relative to the engine or the movement and pass by type of sounds. So what I thought would be interesting, I came up with this idea of just recording car and uh, you know vehicle pass by just on the road. And then I got another idea, if I actually put the car, or not the car, if I put the mic in the passenger seat of my car and then uh, recorded my drive on the way to work. Um, now, this approach had a lot of compromises. I mean, essentially I was battling against either having a super windy recording or, um, you know, of course, the more the window is up, the more I'm filtering out a lot of sound. So as I was driving, I had my headphones on and I just kind of played with the windows as I was going. And, uh, you know, depending on what kind of car or what I was passing, I would adjust the window um, to adjust, you know, how the sound was being filtered. And uh, to be honest with you, I threw away probably 90% of everything that I recorded over a period of a week. But within that other 10%, there was a lot of really great usable material. So why do that versus maybe just go to, you know, an under or, an under or overpass and just record cars passing by like that? Well, this method allowed me to kind of um, get a different you know, speed as I was going by cars. So if there was something, if there's a car that sounded kind of interesting, you know, I'd try to kind of keep up with it. And then even keeping in mind the clip that I was going to use this to design to, uh, I would think about how that, how the movement in that clip was happening. And I would try to emulate that uh, as I was driving. Uh, of course, disclaimer, everything done in the safest possible way. I didn't compromise any aspect of my driving uh, just to record sounds. Um, but yeah, um, just kind of passively doing this uh, over the period of, you know, a week. Um, it didn't take much effort. I was eventually able to pick out a lot of takes that I really thought were great. So um, let's dive in and let's start seeing what we can do with this stuff. Okay, so I got my Pro Tools session open. Uh, before I really dive into the video, let's just, we should kind of see... Um, what kind of material resulted from my uh, from my recording adventures in my car? So I'm not going to show you everything. Uh, I'll probably even set up a timestamp if you don't care about this and you just want to see uh, the cool stuff. Uh, I mean, I think this is the cool stuff, but uh, I'm incredibly biased as, uh, as far as this goes, right? So uh, yeah, we got some car pass bys. So I have some basic car pass bys, just very pedestrian, just any old car that passed by me, you know. Any old car. Um, these all sound roughly, you know, they're they're all in the same category, I'd say. But let's just hear them. You know, let's hear some of the highlights. Great. I really like that one. Let me find the ones I really like. That one's pretty cool, especially at the beginning here. Okay, so you get the idea of that, right? Uh, designed assets, we'll get into that later. Unique, so here's just some of the cars or trucks that I passed by that actually had unique characteristics to them that I wanted to separate out. Um, so ideally, I think I'm just gonna keep doing this. I think I'm gonna just keep uh, setting my mic up and start just recording uh, just even more, like every week, probably like two, two, two days a week I'll record. Um, because on the days I didn't record, there was some really just crazy stuff, especially, um, you know, you probably don't know this cause you're probably not in Orlando or Florida for that matter. But, uh, our, the main road that I have to take to work every day, I four interstate four, there's, it's just, it is, look, I don't even know what the word is for it, but it is a death trap. Okay. Um, so there's like dump trucks, there's like, there's construction going on. There's like any, any number of things that could potentially sound cool are, are definitely happening there. Uh, so I'm going to shut up about that for now. Um, but let's hear, uh, here's a bike. Somebody on a bike flew by me. Really safe stuff, you know? Now see that one. My window is definitely up a uh, considerable amount. But uh, 
Is it usable as a bike standalone pass by? Maybe not, but rest assured you can make some really crazy, cool sci fi, uh, futuristic sci fi, future sci fi, uh, high tech, you know, all those words. You can make uh, some cool sounding vehicles with those. And uh, you know what? I'm going <laughs> to, I am going to tell you, I'm going to tell you all this. Um, this is my second go round recording this video, which the first time I did was about an hour, um, and the screen did not record. So, you know what? I am literally doing this all over again, so I am trying to be positive about that, and uh, so I've got, a, I've got a light mood, and I just kind of, if I'm totally honest, I want to get through this thing, and hopefully that means I do it faster. Let's get to the session, and I promise it'll be worth it. So, I'm not importing anything. Let's, uh, Let's hear this thing, okay? Uh, and actually, let me, I need to pull open all my layers. Boom. So there is all of the layers, my friends. Uh, and it looks um, looks like there's a lot more layers than there actually are, so I'm gonna explain that. But let me let you hear it, okay? Let me let you hear this. So this is a clip from uh, the StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm, uh, the cinematic trailer. Perfect. Okay, so that is the final finished result. And the only thing you're hearing here is the car pass bys. So it's just a lot of clever processing and uh, automation to create what you're hearing uh, or to enhance what you're hearing. Because guess what? We're going to listen to it with all of the inserts bypassed. So uh, shift A with all tracks selected in Pro Tools. And that will. Okay, all bypassed. Let's. Let's hear it now. So this is just the, um, basically the raw effects, um, having edited and done some uh, envelope shaping, you know, through editing, but this is it. Oh, something's sneaking in there. There we are. Let me get you out of there. Let me try that again for you. Okay, so even without anything on there, which I'll put it back. So, effects. No effects. So even with not any effects on there, it still like kind of works, you know? Uh, like it's still like, okay, you know, I could see where this is, yeah, I can see the potential here. So it's not like I had to do anything, um, even though you see all these tracks, and a number of inserts, I didn't do anything uh, really more than enhance what was just kind of what I was what I was hearing there. Uh, I mean, it's cool stuff. It's some cool stuff. But um, let's let's show you. So there's basically four layers to this uh, to this little piece here. Or, well, let me maybe I should. <laughs> Uh, let me clarify what's going on here. So this is just the jets, okay? You're not going to hear any ambient background ambience. There's no, uh, there's no other effects. We're just doing the jets right now. Uh, so there's basically four different layers to this jet sound that I developed, all of which derived from the cars. Uh, so layer one, let's take a listen to this. And what I want to do first is explain the layout. So I have, right now you're looking at five tracks. The top track is actually just going to be used for as a side chain, so you're not, it's not even audible. I can unmute it, and um, I'm going to mention this as I, when I bypassed all those plugins just now, I bypassed stuff, and then when you unbypass it, uh, it brings it out. So there was stuff that was bypassed that probably should have stayed that way, but we're just going to roll with it. Um, so these three, these tracks are basically all identical. Okay, the only difference between the whoosh one, two, and three uh, is that I have varied some of the effects parameters and some of the automation slightly just so that each one has its own personality. And these are just, you know, again, the jet fly guys, right? 
So uh, they basically have the same processing chains on there. But then all three feed into this uh, this aux, which has some additional processing, um, adding additional depth and flavor. And that's, I believe, that's where all my automation is taking place. So yeah, all my all my panning and all my uh, my movement basically. There's a lot of movement stuff going on with this aux track. Uh, let's jump in. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to need to bypass the aux track or the effects that are on there so that we can go through and go through one effect at a time. All right. I'm going to try to remember. I didn't do that in the first, the first time I tried this video, I screwed that up. So now I get a chance to, to make it better. Uh, so let's solo layer one uh, by itself. Okay. All right. So we can, the, the panning is still happening, but that's fine. First plugin in the chain or first insert. Uh, now this is a cool, I'm actually, uh, I'm, I, I'm happy with this little idea that I had um, because what I wanted, you listen to that thing go across the screen, you really want to define what, what point is it? Right, right there. You want that, that point, all blurry as it may seem or blurry as it looks here. You want that point when it hits to be, uh, you know, you want to know. So this transient shaper, um, what I'm doing here is I basically set up this side chain track. So this track above uh, is actually being used as a side chain multiple places in this session. Uh, I'm gonna hide it, but you can see what it is. It's a transient. It's actually what it is is a gunshot of some sort, or it's like a weapon sound, gunshot weapon sound, futuristic high tech weapon sound. You know, uh, that we're not actually gonna hear. So let me just hide it. But uh, it is there. And so at the point where it hits, when this is on, oh, let me back it up for you. So there's with, without. So rather than me adding a layer or an effect in here, uh, like, a, like a hard hit effect, which you very well may, could you could do that. But instead of doing that, I use this uh, to side chain and basically control the dynamics of this um, in a way that would make it more impactful. And they're all doing that. Uh, so I could, boom, boom. Here's this one too. So they all get their own little boom when it comes through. So pretty cool idea if you're looking for a way to, uh, to, make, to make a transient or make a hit stand out with actually there being a hit there. Uh, so let's go to the next one. This is probably the most involved layer. This is really the main, this, uh, jet whoosh one, two, and three with this aux, uh, in there. This is like the main layer of the, uh, of the whole thing. So everything else is just kind of built up scaffolding around this, but all still car sounds. So next thing is, uh, there's nothing to talk about. It's a limiter because... You can see that it's just, uh, it's hitting pretty hard there. So I didn't want it to hit that hard. All right, so that just keeps this thing, keeps my uh, keeps my gain staging in, in, in line there. Filter Freak, boom, let's see what we got. This comes into play a little later. So this is for a little cockpit scenario here. So Filter Freak to, as a high, or not high pass, man, will I ever get that right? It's a low pass filter that I'm modulating. <laughs> right? So, you know, just, that's a little bit more into the mixing realm than it is to the, I don't know, it's a gray area, but um, that's just so that it sounds like you're inside and not outside, right? I think we get it. Okay. Now, here's the big one right here. This is, is this not always the big one? Uh, decapitator. Um, you know, when you need distortion, you use Decapitator. Uh, of course, you know, I'm joking, but um, this plugin or this uh, particular distortion plugin um, is pretty generally, I, I put it on there and it does what I want it to do. So definitely other options. You could definitely use your stock plugins and probably do similar things. Uh, but you know what? I'm going to stop uh, internally debating my usage of Decapitator. This is a good plugin. Uh, and what I'm doing here, and this is going to be, you know, you see it here on one level, but if you take a peek down here, 
Decapitator is also on the aux track. And you're just going to keep seeing this thing pop up in different places. And what I'm doing is I'm using it to build complexity of the sound, making this thing uh, sound like a jet, sound, make it sound more intense, uh, make it sound scary, uh, and just overall excite the tonality of, uh, of what we have here. Uh, so is there anything interesting beyond the settings going on? Well, I've got the tone set slightly bright. If I actually do go to the other ones here, you can see that, uh, the tone is, I set it up just a slight different bit for each one. You see that? Even some of them are using different styles. And I just did that so each one felt like it had its own voice. So as the jets pass by, they don't all sound completely identical. They have some personality. Uh, so it's, you know, it's exciting to hear them. And on top of all that, I am automating the mix values. So I'll just show you one because we can't spend all day on this, certainly. But this is the mix automation for Decapitator. So it starts off here, comes in hot, and then it tapers off as the jet pulls away. Same concept for each of these and uh, going on throughout the rest of this session, which is not a whole lot of pass bys in this initial area. Let me put that back to waveform. And then chorusing. Cool. Yeah, why not? Chorusing, again, going to help emphasize the movement of the effect here. All right, so without. All right, and you know, I'm going to, you're not wrong. This sounds pretty harsh right now, but I, I promise you that when the other layers are brought in, um, as we heard at the beginning, um, everything kind of fills itself out pretty well. So chorus, again, helping out with some movement there for us. Now here's uh, the really interesting, um, or this is like the, the hot take choice right here, if you want to uh, put it that way, I guess. Uh, manipulator, which deserves a video all of its own, to be honest, and that I'm probably going to do sometime in the future where I can really just talk about Manipulator. But it's a, let's oversimplify it and we'll call it a pitch processing uh, plugin. Um, there's some things you can make out in here and understand what they are just from looking at them. You got pitch and formant, uh, harmonics, uh, FM synthesis, or uh, frequency modulation of the harmonics, alternator and octave. So some of this stuff is like without playing with it, you're not, it's not easy to understand. But um, let me tell you why this is on here. So first of all, this is on here because it makes stuff sound really, uh, you know, synthy, really kind of wild. Uh, it can, basically, it's it's strictly for flavor. So where everything else is kind of helping to uh, position and make this unbelievable, this one's kind of adding some flavor to what's there. And I, you can see I have the dry, wet mix. Um, it's mostly, you know, it's like 28%. Maybe go lower, maybe go higher. Let's hear what it's doing. All right, let me unmute it. So here, I'll put it up to a, let's, you know what? I'm indecisive. Let's make, let's leave it alone. Here's what it's doing. So with, without, subtle enough. Let's crank it up so you can just hear what this thing is set up as. So adding some tone, adding some interesting flavor and also helping to sell the movement. There's an input follower here that's driving my harmonics, pitch, formant, and alternator to a certain extent. Uh, so yeah, you know, um, there's actually a bunch of different directions I may have gone other than manipulator. And I did different mockups and I tried different things. And this is just the one that I chose to show you, okay? Uh, don't really need to discuss these other two tracks because it's more or less the same thing. Um, I don't believe, yeah, it's really the same settings for that. The things that are different on these is really those decapitator settings. And of course the samples are different. Uh, okay, so now that we've gone through all that, we can actually, we can make a discussion about what's going on in this aux track. So the aux track, Let's put on Decapitator here, unmute it. So this one is not as aggressive as the other one. I mean, I am driving it pretty hard, but the wet dry mix um, 
is a little bit more towards uh, the drier side. So it's about two thirds of the way there. Different style. Uh, is there any automation? I don't think, nope, not on this one. No automation on this decapitator. So this is more just adding some additional tone. It's adding some darker tone where I was going brighter with the other ones. So this is just to, to add some, uh, add some depth to the flavor of the sound, you know? Uh, spring, reverb, eventide. Uh, this was literally, I put this on here because I, I have a subscription to the eventide bundle and this was a new one and I was like, all right, let's install it. And actually what I had on here first was I was playing with black hole a little bit, which is always a fun sound design -y reverb, which you've already seen me use before too. But uh, I was like, let's try the spring one. And then I was like, oh, cool. This it has a tremolo effect on here. So I used that tremolo effect again to uh, to do to add some movement. You know, this whole thing is about trying to make this come alive, make it actually feel like these things are moving across the screen, make them feel real. So I do a little bit. I don't do so much heavy lifting with any one thing. I've done a bunch of lifting or small lifting uh, to support that idea with a bunch of other or smaller uh, movements and plugins. So mix value on this is set, uh, you know, moderately for a reverb, right? You rarely ever put a reverb up like that. But let's see what it's doing. So with off as a refresher, and then with on. So subtle, let's turn the mix up for you. 27 is where we're at, let me remember that. Okay, and you can see I'm automating the intensity the intensity and the speed here. All right, we get the idea. Let me put that back. Disperser. Not a whole lot that I'm going to say about this. Sometimes you just want something in a sound and you're not sure quite what. And disperser is sometimes that thing. It's just uh, a really very simple. Uh, very interesting plugin that you can put on and uh, gives it kind of and give things a sort of rubbery uh, type of sound. I guess that's really, I guess the best um, word I could use to describe it. It's pretty subtle on here. Here's with it off. With it on. You can really hear it on the tail of these, I think. With it off. So it's, it's adding a little flavor there. It's probably, uh, you may not, everyone may not be able to hear exactly what that's doing, but it does something for me. Uh, Ultra tap. Ooh, some more movement, more modulation. Always a good thing. So again, some more, uh, some, just some small lifting to support my idea here. So let's crank the mix. Ultra tap. Let me go back here. Come on, get back to the beginning. So just kind of adding some cool movement texture. And I ended up with it on 27. So again, all subtle things, but they add up. As you can see when I when I mute all the, the, the plug-in chain. Unfiltered audio. Frequency shifter. Again, very subtle, just adding some tone. Not gonna, no deep dive on this one either, but I am modulating the frequency shifting of this and then also the wet dry mix via an input follower. So it's following the input amplitude and driving these effects. I'll crank it up. So it's at 17.6. I think when I was adding this one, I just liked the kind of strange modulation that it was getting um, in the top end there. I'll put it back to where it was. And then that, mod that slight modulation of the wet dry, again, enhancing the movement of what's on screen. Traveler, in case we needed any more movement enhancement. And you know, 
Um, if I'm totally honest with myself, I could probably go back and maybe thin some of this out. Um, you know, some of this is just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. Um, but overall, I like what I ended up with. So uh, nothing to complain about there. <clears throat> All right, having a look at Filter Freak on this one. Or oh, sorry, Traveler. So having a look at Traveler, just a little bit of the Doppler effect on this and then uh, some attenuation. Um, again, you know, just uh, emphasizing the natural Doppler and attenuation of the sample that's already there. So I feel like it does add something here in this case. So here's with it off. With it on. So it just kind of, it's because this is now on the aux, you know, it's just kind of gluing the other three together and giving us some common characteristics. So now let's go to layer two. Layer two is a purely a sweetener layer. So whereas layer one was very atonal, very noisy. Um, layer two, I wanted it to be something a little more tonal. Um, still has some distortion on there, but it sounds like this. Let's solo it for you. So here's layer two by itself. Okay, now here, um, let me explain how this is routed. So I have my three layers for my three jets, just like before. And these are feeding into an aux with volume automation on there. So this aux, see that? Some very hard volume automation on those hit points. So this thing really has, it's just got this job of kind of helping fill out that that hit point. And then uh, this, because that's where the volume automation is. See that? That aux feeds into a more of like a master aux for the for the for this layer. And then there's some effects on there. So just layers and layers of effects. So I don't have a whole lot to tell you about the individual layers here. Most of what happened is gonna be on these auxes. Uh, although I like, should keep these soloed. So the transient shaper, just as before, you know, just supporting that impact point. Let's check out the the first part of our signal chain here. So RC20. This thing I just have on here for some tonality. This uh, first module, the noise module, it adds in, uh, hang on, let me mute these bad boys. Boom. So this is all mute. Now we just got up to RC20. So there's those layers by themselves. Again, there was no effects on there to, that you really needed to hear. Uh, it's just that transient shaper to just make up like, like a very hard point. And so RC20, bypass it. On. So not a ton, but you can hear the space plug or the space layer in there, especially. So there's a little decay, a little reverb on there. The noise adds a, uh, it's basically a noise file that's playing in there and it has an input follower. So it will follow your signal. And sometimes it's just an interesting way to add tone. Decapitator, again. So without with darkening it up a, a good bit, um, not completely all the way into the mix, not driving, I mean, I don't have punish on, so I'm not driving it that hard. Uh, but yeah, again, just another layer of distortion there to help us out. Unfiltered audio spec ops. So just, this is a messy plugin. It's just, it's kind of a more digital type of distortion. But the other thing that's important that I've got is I'm stretching this out and then uh, the pitch shift is down 12 semitones. So it's kind of putting it in a lower register for me. And the mix value is at about 83%. So unsolo those. Oh, you know what? No, I do need, sorry. need. I apologize, I need to keep this on. And okay, so now we're going to the master aux for this layer. So filter freak. 
This is doing something here. Not automated. I am using the modulation just a teeny tiny bit with some resonance added, which I haven't had before. Again, just controlling where this layer is gonna sit in my frequency spectrum. The job of this layer is just, it's more tonal. I've said this, but it's also, it's tonal and it's helping emphasize my, uh, my transient just a little bit. It's on the darker side. Trash too. Another kind of cool go-to distortion plugin for me. Um, the, you can do so much with Trash 2, and you can see here these different modules. There's Trash, there's filters, um, there's a convolution module, dynamics, there's even a delay built in. Uh, I just happen to really like the, the type of distortion you get out of this is very different than a lot of other things. So just a good option uh, if you want to change things up a bit. Um, there's nothing that I didn't hear was super in depth. I honestly pulled up a preset uh, from the the fuzz menu right here, and I was like, okay, that works, and I just kept it moving. You know, sometimes that's how it is. You just put pop something on there. Do you like it? Yes, and then you go to the next. Uh, I knew I wanted distortion, and I wanted it to be not another decapitator. I wanted a different type of effect, so that's where I ended with it. Traveler. More of the same as what I um, kind of described before, just emphasizing the natural movement. So without, with. It's a little more aggressive than my other one, I believe. I, I didn't have the Doppler set as high and the attenuation didn't have set as high either. All right. Moving on, Ultra Tap. This is literally, I think this is a copy and paste from the other layer, although I put the mix values up. It's almost got like a like a speeder bike type of sound to it. But again, more tonal than, um, than what we were looking at before. All right, so now we're going to move on to layer two. Or not layer two, layer... Better unsolo these two, by the way. Move on to layer three. Layer three, this is essentially the last uh, crucial or important layer in the sound here. Layer four is just kind of a, it's a bonus layer, if you want me to call it that. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see. Layer, th the purpose of this one is to emphasize the low frequencies of these passbys. So let me go ahead and solo this these guys. So here's, of course, with everything on, which there's not a whole lot here. There's really not a whole lot here. Um, basically, when I was watching this and I was kind of looking at the motion, how these things are moving, how it, how it felt to me. Um, oh, hang on. Um, it felt like those low frequencies should die out later, ever so slightly. So these samples, they're stretched out. I believe it did some, um, it did some variable pitch uh, adjustments with these. I just wanted to emphasize that those low frequencies and make this thing sound like it was kind of just more alive. I like guess, is, is that really what I've been saying the whole time? Just, basically, I'm doing everything I can to make this sound real, okay? It's, is that, uh, I guess that's too obvious, but uh, nonetheless, I've said it already. Okay, let me shut up. Now, this is the one I think, I don't remember what it was this okay so I don't remember if I had this bypassed in the final mix I think it was okay but either way um, let me bypass these sounds I could have just done the command key but I didn't so nothing So quite the opposite of my other layers. These are really just kind of dragging on. So no hard, I'm not using the transient uh, hit on here. So mostly what we've got is decapitator and filter freak. What, I'm just, I'm getting tired guys. So I'm, uh, folks, correct myself there with that. Okay, so more distortion, two thirds of the way dry or wet rather, uh, darker emphasis on the tonality, less drive than some of the other layers, 
but again, I just, you know, you got to have that, that, that in there. Ah, uh, went to hit tab. All right, that thing sounds like it's burning. Filter Freak, uh, low pass filter. Again, we don't need to compute. We don't need to compute the high frequencies in the other layers so much. So there you can get a pretty good sense of what's doing. And I don't believe this layer is supposed, or I don't believe this is actually supposed to be um, active, but I don't quite remember. I mean, I think I'll leave it on. Uh, okay, so um, final layer. This was like the final important layer. The next layer was kind of like an experiment. Uh, which let me make sure nothing's soloed right now. Okay. So final layer is the jet synth layer. And uh, there's nothing here. Uh, this one's just a, it's a single track. And you can see that it's got all three jets. Um, I envied, I use Envy, the envelope follower plugin to meld what was here better onto um, or better into the, uh, to the overall mix. But basically I sent out all three other layers uh, via a, a, a bus to my um, to my modular synth rack into an input follower there. So I had an input follower from my session driving all kinds of effects, filters and uh, oscillators and things on my modular rack. And then I recorded the output of that, which uh, I should probably, let me mute some stuff. So here's, um, I wish I had it without the NV in there. Maybe I do, let's see. I kind of do. Okay. So let's hear it. Um, I don't want to screw this up either. Okay. Let me be careful. Let's hear it without the envelope follower on there. So it's just the, the raw stuff coming from my synth. The input follower is not super precise in the synth. So that's why I used NV to really glue it down. But here's what we got. I got it really quiet in the mix. It's really debatable if this is adding something to the to the flavor or not. Um, but I just wanted to try it, you know? It was fun. Uh, so let me unmute these one by one, ultra tap. Of course, this is going to add something. This is the same ultra tap as I had on the others. Okay. And then we got filter freak. With a little resonance, a little modulation. Again, don't want this competing for the higher frequency layers. Decapitator. Uh, what is okay? It's all the way wet. Uh, focus on the darker tones quite a bit. Drives up quite a bit, and then some chorusing. Cool. All right. So that's that. And then on my final aux here, um, it's just some. Uh, there's, this is really the only thing I need to talk about is the trash insert on my master bus here. Um, so I'm actually just using the convolve module, uh, to add some kind of interesting space, uh, interesting resonance to, uh, what we're hearing. And I have the, the wet dry mix is down quite a bit. Um, so you, it's really just barely in there. Um, but I will show you, I'll crank it up. So here's the convolve. And again, this is, you're gonna hear all the layers now with all the effects on. So it's kind of adding some really cool, interesting tones that you, that you really, uh, you get from uh, convolutions, uh, reverbs and things like that. Uh, so it's just, it adds some, an interesting layer to it. Let me pull it back about halfway. All right, and then back more. All right, that's about where it was. Cool, and that's it. Uh, that's a total walkthrough of everything going on with this this one effect. So you can see 
just using something uh, as simple as a source as a car pass by, uh, and then just kind of adding some flavor to it in, in, in different in such ways, uh, you could really get something that sounds convincing as a crazy, cool, futuristic sounding jet. So let me, uh, let's, we should probably let you hear it one more time, right? I'll do it layer by layer. So here's the main layer. And then the full layer, or the second layer. So solo those in. So it's hard, it's not in there a lot, but you can hear. It's helping the tone a good bit, making it not sound so noisy, but yet still noisy because it's a fast moving jet through the air. Uh, afterburn, so here's the low frequency stuff. Really just kind of ties the whole picture together. And, uh, okay, this is, this is getting out of hand. This is where you need a control surface when you're gonna mute and solo stuff all at the same time. Uh, and then once more, let's do for fun, let's just, uh, just totally turn off everything. So here's nothing. You know, what's funny is I think there's a sample, I don't know where it is, but I can hear right there. It's like me moving around in the car or something. I don't know. Uh, probably have to address that for the final mix. Uh, so there's nothing on there. That's just cars wishing by and then put everything back except for this guy. there you have it. Um, now I hesitate to call it my final mix down. Um, although I did, I did spend some time, you know, listening and going back and forth. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it generally. Um, I did, uh, I kind of did this on the fly. I did it, um, in pretty much entirely in headphones. So I'd really like to get on some monitors at some point and really fine tune some of this. But I think the ideas um, that I've put forth here are really pretty solid ideas. And, uh, you know, it's there's nothing here that I showed you that's difficult to do on your own. You know, anyone can go record some car pass bys, and I think it's a great source. Uh, I, In fact, I, I'd really like to do a part two for this, and I'm going to show you some of, the, uh, some of the effects that I derive from it. Um, so... Uh, yeah, because I already have the session set up. I just, um, we got to keep this video under a certain length. So let me just say thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you were able to get something out of this. Uh, let me give you the standard YouTube boilerplate. Make sure you, uh, you like and you subscribe to the channel. Uh, even though this is the uh, a sound effect channel, I'm doing a little partnership with them for this one. But subscribe to their channel, subscribe to my channel, and... Um, yeah, I'll keep putting more out. I have uh, got plenty of ideas. So uh, thank you again. And oh, there should be some some freebie sounds to go along with this one as well. Um, there'll be a link. Um, I don't have the ability to link directly from the video, but there will be a link uh, that you probably may have already even seen. So uh, that's all for now. Uh, take care, folks.